my fellow seed dispersers. This is Mike with Price Plot. Today we're gonna do a video on one of the most highly underrated fruits and thus highly underrated dietary supplement ingredients slash extracts, pomegranate. Now this all kicked off when we were talking about Primeval Labs' original ape shit pumps. <laughs> I laugh every time we say that. They're stimulant-free pre-workout supplement, which has a pomegranate extract inside. We don't see this that often in the dietary, in the sports nutrition side of the dietary supplement industry, but I think we should. And that's why we're gonna talk about pomegranate today. Now it's in the original ape shit pumps product, not the not the max ones that are behind me. And we've also seen Gorilla Chemist use it in some of his stuff, so it's out there, but I don't think it's out there enough personally. Let's talk about pomegranate. Now, if you don't know what pomegranate is, Cody's gonna show a picture up on the screen. Now this is a fruit, and we have a blog post on the Price Well blog that we'll link to in the YouTube description talking about some of that. I do have my notes here with me and everything. This is a shrub that grows about 15 to 35 feet tall. It's called Punica granatum. We'll get into that Punica, the, these words are gonna come back because we scientists discover a lot of cool chemical compounds inside of the, the pomegranate, and so a lot of them have names that derive from the Punica granatum name as well. The history kind of traces it back to Mediterranean area. I'm a Mediterranean myself, or that's where my ancestry is, so I, I take interest in this kind of stuff, but uh, Spanish settlers brought it over to like South America in 1500s, and the 1700s it brought to California, and it grows pretty well in a lot of places, so it's kind of universal at this point, but it seems like it came from the Mediterranean. What's cool about the pomegranates is that you have this fruit, it's like a very large apple-sized object, but smaller than a grapefruit, but you have seeds, very, you have a lot of seeds that come out of it, and there's a lot of different, you look on the internet, there's a lot of different ways to get the seeds out of there, because they're inside of this rind area called a, it's like a seed coat called a sarcotesta, which is not edible, it might have a little bit of juice in there, but it's really the seeds that we're going for that have the juices. So the seeds can like kind of knock them out of there, there's some tricks of using water, the, the, the sarcotesta floats in the water, the seeds actually sink. When you squeeze or compress the seeds, you get the pomegranate juice. It's very red and very staining. And the reason it's very red is because it has the anthocyanins and the elagitanins and polyphenols inside that they have, those are used for natural colors. They're very, very, very colorful, but they also have a lot, very strong antioxidant, antimicrobial properties to them. And so that's kind of where we're gonna go. So you squeeze these seeds and you get some really cool benefits and pomegranate juice is what's covered in some of this research, but there's also, it could also be dried and put into a powder as well. And so that's what's actually in the Ape Shit Pump Supplement. Some of the benefits of pomegranate, once we've kind of extracted, we're talking about mostly the seeds and mostly the juice or like the, the dried pulp from the seeds and, or the dried juice from the seeds. And so the first thing is that, like I said, it's, it's completely loaded with tons and tons of antioxidants. So in general, a lot of the benefits are going to be with respect to cardiovascular issues. Pomegranate is highly beneficial for uh, reducing oxidative stress and attenuating inflammation. This is both good uh, in terms of like just staying healthy, but also we're gonna see that it's also good for combating soreness after a, a, a hard training session. And even like using it before training, uh, we're gonna be able to possibly get a lot better endurance. It, it depends on what you consider to be a lot. Like it's one of those times, we're not gonna expect steroid-like gains here, but 10% better effort, yes. And that's actually a big deal, especially because one of these studies were done with very, very highly trained athletes. But back to the constituents of the actual pomegranate, what we have are a lot of the flavonoids, anthocyanins, punicic acid, and elagitanins. So what's really cool is with, with pomegranate, we're gonna get different stuff. Like for instance, we've talked about epicatechin a lot on this channel. You can get epicatechin in chocolate and green tea, apple peels for instance. With some of the stuff that we're gonna find inside of pomegranate, you're not gonna find in many other places. It's a very unique ingredient, and that's why I think it's pretty cool that Primeval Labs is using it, but it's also like something unique that could be added to diets that a lot of people aren't considering, especially when we get into some of these benefits. So like the clean white seed, they're about 18% oil, uh, according to one study. 65% of that is punicic acid. And so that's one of the key constituents that's gonna drive a lot of this. And what we'll see is that the metabolites of some of these constituents also have their own benefits as well. The first section of this article, we talk about about the anthocyanin. This is what makes it very red and this is what makes it staining. So be careful if you are squeezing the seeds or messing with the juice or even the supplements. And if you saw me, if you remember me calling you a seed disperser in our article, this is where we actually talk about some of the evolutionary discussions regarding fruits. A lot 
lot of people believe that fruits want to be eaten and they consider animals and I guess humans by extension to be seed dispersers. This if the seed can be as if the seed can like survive the gut and get pooped out somewhere else and grow a new tree, then we have successfully dispersed the seed. Alternatively, if you spit out the seed, or alternatively, uh, if you're a squirrel and you forget where you planted the seed, then we're all dispersing seeds. So this is kind of like uh, Mother Nature's way of getting us to enjoy the fruits of its labor and spread it. It's a, you know, the pollinator. It's a different way of, of looking at pollination. Some of the research goes down that rabbit hole, but a lot of people believe that, and, I'm, and I believe this as well, like plants cannot fight back, can they? They have to basically fight back through chemical warfare. So for instance, like really, really, really spicy plants, that's kind of like their way of attacking you. But at the same time, so we have to like kind of be careful of talking about that too much versus maybe some plants do want us to spread their seeds. And in the case of the pomegranate, this is like a hardy seed that is very, very prone to successful dispersion. Now, unfortunately, we are no longer pooping outside. Well, maybe uh, I'm not usually, when, unless we're camping or something. But the whole idea was that we are going to help Mother Nature disperse the seeds. And in, in return, it gives us some caloric benefits and some uh, health benefits as well. So you know, just a little bit of a thing there. For today, we're going to cons consider ourselves to be seed dispersers. So anyway, these anthocyanins, when you compare, there's a study that compares a ton of different fruits and one of the coolest things is that pomegranates were found to have the highest cellular antioxidant capacity compared to 24 or 25 other commonly consumed fruits and it even beat out the berries now berries however were highest in the ORAC or the oxygen radical absorbance capacity score but right behind those berries were pomegranates what's cool is that pomegranate is technically considered a berry even though it's like way bigger and way different we don't kind of we don't really consider it a berry but technically it is in the class of berry so when you're talking about healthy berries, it's not just about like blackberries and raspberries and all that. Pomegranates in that family and it outperforms berries in some of these metrics as well. Well, the other berries outperform it in or ORAC for instance too, but pomegranates, it's not a top tier of antioxidant capacity. In addition, we've seen that there's a lot of anti-inflammatory effects that come from the anthocyanins inside. What they're able to do is actually inhibit the production of prostaglandins, which are the precursors to our inflammatory cytokines. And what's interesting is that this is a actually how aspirin works. Now, I'm not saying that if you have a migraine, go and eat a bunch of pomegranate seeds or anything, it, it could be worth a shot. We have a lot of the similar mechanisms inside. And what we're also gonna see is another similar mechanism from one of the metabolites of pomegranate that we'll discuss in a little bit too. So you have a lot of cool anti-inflammatory support from ingredients like this, as well as what we're gonna see is increased nitric oxide production for better blood flow, which can also alleviate some issues as well. And finally, anthocyanins have been shown to have anti-diabetic effects. What they could do is actually upregulate the, uh, the hormone adiponectin, which increases insulin sensitivity, especially glucose uptake into the muscle cells in sports nutrition, slash what we call as active nutrition now. That's a good thing. We, uh, we wanna work out and we wanna drive our sugar into the muscle cells. Of course, with those anti-diabetic type effects, I wouldn't just go and give your, your diabetic father or just glasses and glasses of pomegranate juice, of course, like monitor with a constant glucose monitor and understand, you know, the sugar could have have negative effects, for instance. Not all juices are necessarily bad if they do have some good constituents inside, especially if you can use that to replace maybe other less nutritious dietary carbohydrates, then I think it's a good trade-off. On top of that, we've seen anthocyanins in a lot of stuff, and clearly pomegranates have a lot. This is where we have some different stuff, though. The elagitanins are another class of molecule inside, including one called punic allergen. And so this is one of those kind of punica granatum pomegranate-specific molecules. This is a type of tannin that has some incredible antioxidant activity. So there's one study in 2017. What the researchers did is that they injected mice with a tumor necrosis factor alpha, TNF alpha, which is an inflammatory cytokine that causes muscle wasting. So obviously something we want to avoid. They wanted to see if pomegranate extract would kind of like combat that. And it turns out that it actually did combat the TNF alpha induced muscle damage and it did it amazingly well. What's Here's what's cool though, is when the researchers went to look at the blood and they were looking for pomegranate's metabolites, they saw basically the most significant quantities was something called urolithin A. Now, if you've been a longtime reader on our Price Paul blog, you'll see that there, these urolithin classes are uh, found in many different plant extracts and metabolites, and they're quite anabolic. So urolithin A is a metabolite of punic allergen. What ended up happening is that the mice's bodies were defending themselves. They're using this, and there was all that was left over was this like pro-anabolic metabolite of one of the main constituents of pomegranate inside. It's possible that this is going to help uh, you know, prevent muscle
muscle wasting and it has like an anti-catabolic effect with it. What's cool about this urolithin A is that it has its own anti-inflammatory effects. So it's able to inhibit the COX-2 enzyme and that once again works similarly to some of the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs that we get. So we have a couple different things inside of here that are actually providing anti-inflammatory benefits that are like profound. Really cool fruit here and there's not a lot of fruits that are going to have this stuff in it. That's why we like pomegranate a lot. Finally, another cool thing about this urolithin A metabolite, it's able to induce mitophagy, which is allowing the body to selectively break down old and dead dying mitochondria, clear out the, uh, the way for new ones and allow for new growth. We want our mitochondria, our cells, powerhouses to be healthy, but sometimes you got to do out with the old and with the new. We talk about senescence, senolytic ingredients, clearing out the dead old stuff. One of the metabolites of pomegranate here, urolithin A, can also do that. So it's really cool. Something that, you know, doesn't get covered a whole lot when we're talking about other like senescent uh, ingredients, for instance. And then finally, we have some other flavonoids inside of pomegranate that have certain cardioprotective, neuroprotective, anti-inflammatory, anti-microbial properties. Uh, but we don't get too deep into that. It's time to like get into the pomegranate research here because we got to put the rubber to the road here. So in terms of exercise performance, the study that I like the most is in 2014. Randomly assigned 19 men and women their average age of 22, and they had either a gram of pomegranate extract or placebo. The, their VO2 max, the, their average VO2 max going into the study was 51.3 plus or minus 9.4 milliliters per kilogram per minute, and that is very high. These were trained athletes. It wasn't like rookie beginner gains or any of that kind of stuff. So this is kind of a one-off experiment anyway, but these are significantly above average scores. We had a very like athletic uh, subjects or participants in this study. What the researchers did is they took their maximum running speed, they took their running speed at a maximal oxygen consumption using a treadmill test and then they had them come back for they had them rest and then they would come back for uh one to two days later and then the next time they gave them either the pomegranate or the placebo 30 minutes before doing the run again at this time at 90 percent vo2 max the pomegranate extracts subjects time to exhaustion increased by 12 percent really solid especially because these people are already really well in shape and at 100 percent vo2 max they're going pretty much going all out it was a little bit less but still significant seven percent increase in time to exhaustion so really really good increases are like really like steroid like gains 50 percent no of course not but when you're talking about really good athletes asking 10 percent longer or able to go harder for just a little bit longer that's a huge deal like that's placement in, in in a competition so that's a big deal now the authors of the study pointed out that uh, pomegranate extracts ability to increase uh, nitric oxide production was a big part of this so we've seen this this is why we see it in a product like ape shit pumps and it, additionally the, the mechanism seems to be like one of those like kind of defensive roles as well because the pomegranate extract can protect the nitric oxide from getting oxidized so keeping around the nitric oxide a little bit longer we've seen some ingredients talk about like increased bioavailability and nitric oxide and everything so however you want to phrase it but uh, pomegranate it works in in that like protective type measure but it's not just a defensive role pomegranate does also have some nitrates in it which can increase nitric oxide on their own using a completely different pathway uh, so we've covered that a lot on this channel too but if you're going to get a gram of pomegranate you're probably not going to get that much nitrate but we'll take any amount of natural amount so that's another good thing and then getting back to our discussion on mitochondrial function there was a study where research researchers were looking to see whether or not pomegranate extract could actually improve mitochondrial function. And what happened was that they were giving it to rats with high blood pressure, and it did significantly reduce their blood pressure and improve cardiovascular function. And the authors pointed out that pomegranate extract alleviates hypertension-induced reduction of mitochondrial biogenesis. Okay, so to parse that out, the high blood pressure, hypertension, was causing stress on the system. That was causing the, like, no more mitochondria to form. The body's busy fighting other battles. However, allowing pomegranate to increase nitric oxide, thereby decrease blood pressure, which then decreases systemic st stress, allowed the body to generate more mitochondria, more cell powerhouses, and then ultimately you're getting this positive feedback loop instead of a negative feedback loop, but a positive feedback loop of more mitochondria, better blood flow, better nutrient delivery, all these all these things that come together. Some really cool benefits, and then there's even benefits of like increased ATP production, thanks to more mitochondria, ATP being the, the cellular currency, the energy currency of our cells, all that stuff. And then we also have seen significant anti-inflammatory effects in those who take it 
a lot of times because of those anthocyanins. For instance, with the uh, anti-inflammatory effects, there is a study showing that diabetics who drank pomegranate juice experienced significant reductions of both interleukin-6 in the blood and C-reactive protein, CRP, which kind of is indicative of like whole body inflammation. So this, there's a lot of anti-inflammatory benefits here, and it's been shown in people who are oftentimes highly inflamed. Finally, one good thing is that recovery from exercise. I kind of mentioned this earlier on in the video, uh, particularly from weightlifting. There's a study of nine elite weightlifters, and it found that palm juice has significantly reduced muscle soreness and blood pressure following an Olympic lifting session and improved total volume performance by 8%. So we're kind of still in that 7 to 12, you know, that 10%-ish range, extra volume, extra time to exhaustion, um, extra benefits. I'm losing my voice. Maybe my voice needs some palm extract here. And then finally, we should talk a little bit about something that I think should be explored a little more. I don't want to get too excited. I guess we should. We'll get a little bit excited. But 24% increase in testosterone. This is a study in from 2015. We're using two cups, about a half a liter, about two cups of pomegranate juice daily. So I'm not sure what the equivalent here would be in terms of extract. But that was able to increase salivary testosterone by 24% and a huge reduction in cortisol levels. So kind of the cortisol we, we like to you know blame is the stress hormone. It's obviously more complicated than that. Chronically elevated cortisol can keep testosterone down as most of us know, and pomegranate seems to regulate a lot of that. That was in humans. There's also another rat study that was just about the same thing, 24% gain in testosterone. That's a big number. I mean, like the ashwagandha study we cite a lot, it was 15%. Now we've we've had like people on the podcast, Dr. Kam Sapa, who talks about ashwagandha, 15% is not a clinically relevant range. Yes, is it statistically significant? Yes, but is it would is the ashwagandha's 15% clinically significant? Not really. But 24%, that might not even be that's pretty solid still. Like that's if you're, you know, if you're running at 400 and you can get that up to 500, I personally do believe that that is clinically significant. It's not. It's not super physiological. If you want to go do that and then go, you know, shoot yourself up with drugs and everything, but a 24% gain in testosterone isn't too bad. Now it is salivary testosterone. We would need a lot more information and data here. But the point being is that we've seen so many testosterone boosters that use like ashwagandha. We see tons of pump supplements using many other ingredients, but pomegranate oftentimes gets ignored, and I don't think it should be. I think a lot of times, you know, money drives this train. Obviously, like maybe someone needs to come out with a standardized action extract to get some of this good stuff we've been talking about and then run some studies on it. There's there's clearly something to the pomegranate. 24% is really good, especially if you could like standardize this to the to the right constituents and hopefully not knock out any of the stuff that's like, you know, helping out. There's a solid ingredient in the mix there. We saw that like 15% testosterone gain with ashwagandha led to a crazy ton of ashwagandha sales. If someone could do the same thing with a standardized pomegranate extract, then we might we might not be here a couple years from now talking about just the pumps. Might be talking about testosterone gain as well. And and I think 24% is solid. As someone who's like a natty, obviously, yeah, well, I'll take that. You crazy? So anyway, that's it. So that's why I'm, I was excited to see that um, Primeval is using a little bit of pomegranate in Ape Shit Pumps. I think more brands should like dig into this and use it. We should dig into like, what, you know, how can this be better extracted? Because there might be something here, especially because it's such a really, really unique fruit. I mean, just look at it. Those seeds are like kind of crazy. And it's a... Uh, Everyone's looking at the same old stuff, at the same old like apples and chocolate and all that. And I love those ingredients. Don't get me wrong, but there's something special about pomegranate. So now you know. Check out the uh, the blog blog.pricewell.com. We have a link in the YouTube description. Getting into it in more detail and everything. But yeah, feel free to drop any comments. There there might be a few other studies out there, but so far like yeah, about 10 percent gain somewhere in the 20% testosterone, if we can dose it high enough, that's pretty solid. Appreciate watching, feel free to leave any comments.